Hello again, Yuri. Uh, before we start part two, I'm just going to tell you that besides the main categories of technology that you will be looking at, there are a few more near the end, which you should add to the bottom of your table once you get there. Another quick note is that this is all about you researching uh, these things for yourselves. So I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to hand it over to you to do the reading, watch a video if you like, and make that make the necessary notes. Also, while you're reading and listening, try and take note of what is causing changes. Is it uh, individuals? Is it war? Is it um, economics? Let's get started. Your next category is warfare. Have a look at this slide, read through it. <coughs> it tells you about uh, knights, which are a new kind of technology you can say. It also explains factors that cause this technology to change. And if you like, there are a couple of videos afterwards, how to joust like a medieval knight, and also a video uh, from Full Metal Jousting, an American show, uh, which explains the rules of jousting. Okay. Two minutes then, make your notes, pause here. Next piece of technology is the longbow. It was mentioned in the last slide. It's uh, super important to uh, English military success in the medieval period and uh, is almost um, is iconic and almost um, mythological in the way that it's talked about by uh, some historians. Have a read, have a watch uh, of a really cool historian called Kevin um, giving a demonstration of longbow. He's quite intense but really interesting. Okay, so a few minutes again, make the notes about the longbow, pause here. Next one is the cannon, which came over from China through the trade routes, through the Silk Road trade route. And the cannon was still in its infancy, not very sophisticated, liable to blow up. Make a note about the cannon, watch a couple of videos about it if you have time if you want to and think about facing these cannons when they're mounted in the um, gun ports of the gatehouse you would not want to attack that castle a few minutes then make note about the cannon pause the video now next one you can do this very basically, very briefly. There are four different, um, sorry, three different object here, technologies. On the left-hand side is the trebuchet, okay, and the middle is the crossbow, and on the right-hand side is the siege tower. Have a read, make notes in the warfare section, and if you want to, you can see how they work by clicking on the video link. Two minutes. Pause now. Okay, we're moving into communication. This is going to be a sort of transport communication section. Um, this is a brief introduction after the Romans leave and before our next invention turns up. There is only one way to create books and written word, and that is literally by writing everything out by hand and the people who can best do this are noblemen and people with most time to do it are the monks so monasteries um, become um, I don't want to say publishing houses but monasteries were where uh, any written word was created in illuminated manuscripts like you see in the top right corner so that's a brief introduction that's what we're working with for hundreds of years, handwritten manuscripts. A little note of that in the pre-Roman, uh, sorry, post-Roman technology. And after uh, 1440, we have the new invention, 
Okay, the new invention in medieval times is the printing press, uh, created in Germany by Johannes Gutenberg, okay, who's in the bottom left there. Uh, and this was basically the idea that you could just get lots of letters in a row and slather ink all over it, and then you could print multiple times on multiple pieces of uh, paper, which was also brought from China. And uh, you could create pamphlets and books and newspapers and journals, and suddenly everyone has a lot more access to the written word and it's a lot easier to create. You don't need your monks working for years in their scriptoria. Okay, so it's a very important invention. Communication. Two minutes. Write down your notes on this one. Pause the video now. After Johannes Gutenberg creates the printing press in Germany, William Caxton, who is a businessman, decides he's going to steal it. And he doesn't literally steal the thing. He takes the idea, he takes the it's a, um, um, version of the printing press back to England with him and sets himself up as uh, the guy who creates the English printing press. So important that King Edward IV uh, is even given a demonstration. That's the image I've got here. Okay, and William Caxton creates the first printed versions of some of our most famous works, such as the Canterbury Tales, uh, which is a collection of medieval stories. Two minutes, write notes. We've got an individual who creates the change, we've got the change itself, and we've got a bit of the impact as well. Pause the video here. I just thought I'd give you. Um, an image that shows an actual printing press, the re reproduction of a medieval printing press, and you can see it's massive and it would require more than one man to operate. Paper goes in, big wooden stamp comes down and presses the letters into the paper. Pretty cool. Okay, transport. The next one is this is what I'm going to say about transport for now. Uh, you've still got uh, wheeled carriages, um, but you've also got the invention of the wheelbarrow, or probably the reinvention of the wheelbarrow um, in this period. It certainly turns up in a lot of um, uh, manuscripts and printed works as well. Ships are also developing to become more long range. They've got better rudders to be, so they can be steered better. And they also have um, just generally better techniques creating these ships and they can go on longer voyages and hopefully you will see next lesson how navigation develops in the next period but it definitely starts to uh, improve in the medieval period okay this is public health uh, this is a major one uh, obviously we saw with the romans that public health was great there were sewers there was running water there was uh, there were um, medicines and doctors who actually wrote things down studied very seriously the science of medicine um, but it's a bit different for medieval people and um, you have two choices here either read about it from what i've written on the slide or have a little look at the video and it will explain it to you okay two minutes or a bit longer stop here and do that <laughs> hopefully you got that link to work from the video um, I just wanted to say a little bit more about the um, guard robes. I think they're quite funny. Um, you'll see cartels around like this one. If you look at the picture, you can see little things sticking out of the wall. That is the toilet, the guard robe. And you can see the bottom picture is the inside of it. You're literally sitting over a hole outside the walls of the castle. Um, a lot of stories, um, like non, well, historical fiction, had people attacking castles through the toilets, etc. That is because they are stuck outside the castle. Pretty cold and windy. An important thing to mention is that glasses are created in the medieval period um, in around 1286 in Italy. Um, and we know that they're being used by people in Exeter. The Bishop of um, Exeter Cathedral has glasses in the 1300s. Um, and this obviously is very important because people are spending a lot of time illuminating manuscripts and writing by candlelight, and the eyesight's very poor, ultimately. 
for the computer. Glasses are a major, major um, uh, invention that helps them to read. Okay, pause it here, make a note of that, and we'll carry on. Time isn't an invention exactly, but measuring time is. And in the medieval period, we have two different things happening. We have uh, hourglasses being used frequently. Make a note of that and we'll move on. As well as hourglasses, we have mechanical clocks being created um, definitely for Perhaps not the first time, but definitely in this period, mechanical clocks um, arrive on the scene. Some people suggest that the Romans and ancient Greeks had ideas about creating mechanical clocks. There's no concrete evidence and absolute evidence for this. However, medieval mechanical clocks did exist like these. In 1484, you can see one from Exeter, which is beautiful. There's three pictures there. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Bottom right corner, you've got one from Salisbury Cathedral from 1386, so much older. And in the top right hand corner, you've got this beautiful um, astronomical clock from Prague, uh, which is around, from around 1410. Uh, all of these would have let um, the normal common people um, know the season that it was, where the planets were, where the sun was meant to be, where the moon was. So they could not only tell the time, but they could also um, think about their horoscopes if they were into that sort of thing. Uh, I wanted to add the extra astronomical clock because apparently it is where we get the nursery rhyme, hickory dickory dock, mouth around up the clock. And the small door you can see in the third picture has a hole at the bottom, and uh, that is door into the clock where the mouse is supposed to have run. Main point of this, mechanical clocks were a medieval invention. Moving on. Massively important textiles. I'm not gonna talk about this much, but just to say you must write down these two inventions, the weaving loom and the mechanical filling mill. Look at the bold black letters. Those are the two inventions, super important. Make the cloth industry, the wool cloth industry in Britain, uh, incredibly productive and lucrative. England became rich just because of the wool. Of two minutes, have a read and make the notes. Pause the video here. Uh, I hope that you've had a look at the pictures. You can see from lamb to cloth, you can see the lamb there being sheared, then the wool comes off, and then the middle picture is the mechanical filling mill. Basically, uh, water powered hammers hammer the cloth flat, and then the cloth is spun and woven on looms, and it creates cloth. And that mill would not have worked without one of these, okay? The uh, um, water mills. Have a quick read, make the notes, two minutes, off you go. Well done for getting this far, okay? Take a break. You are two thirds of the way through. We are nearly at the end of the lesson. There is one more video left, okay? Have a little break, have a tea and a biscuit, and start that video in a couple of minutes.